All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the WOTC Obsession live stream and chat. And tonight we are talking about the Delphi case and the recent revelations and news that's been happening since the arrest of Richard Allen on October 26, 2022, just a short time ago. The world heard about that on October 28, 2022. And then the following Monday, there was, of course, the press conference that let everybody know that. The reason he was arrested was that he was brought up on two counts of murder for the murders of Abby Williams and Liberty German, the victims of the Delphi murders. So welcome, everybody. I'm so glad you're here. Um, hi, Yarnamins. How are you? Wonderful moderator and good friend. Thank you so much. Hi, Zyra. How are you doing? Um, hi, Jeannie Ramsey. How are you doing? So nice to see you. I was just reading your email early. I have to email you back. I'm sorry about that, but I'll get back to you. And is Daylight Disinfectant here? Because I told Daylight Disinfectant no chat in the beginning, but I don't even know if Daylight Disinfectant is here. So let's see who else is here. Hi, R, sweetie. How are you? Did I say hi to you? Another one of our wonderful moderators, and Jody is cool. Hey, everybody. How are you doing today? And welcome everybody else that might be in chat. So recently, I've been following personally all of the news that's been coming out about the Delphi case. And I personally believe that there is a connection between Richard Allen, the person who was just arrested for the murders of Abby and Libby, and Keegan Klein, the person who was arrested for unrelated charges. Now, I have to be careful about what I say in regards to those charges because I just recently have been getting dinged by YouTube for saying the wrong things. So I'm going to have to talk in code a little bit. So, <laughs> oh, thank you, Zyra. You're so sweet. Um, but you guys will definitely know what I'm referring to. So how many of you have heard the recent interview from radio with Doug Carter? I haven't heard it all that much um, or seen anybody talk about it too much on YouTube, which I thought was pretty surprising. Um, so we're going to play that in just a short time here. So you haven't, Ara? Oh, my gosh. Wow. I would be, I would think that you would because you're always up to the minute, up to date on all the latest news with true crime. So if you haven't, then I bet a lot of other people have as well. So I'm going to play it right now one time and then I'm going to, I'll play it again later. I only have two minutes of the voice clips. So it's actually really hard to find. So let's just take a listen to, to what I have here. Okay. Hi, Sis Vicious. How are you doing, sweetheart? All right, bringing up the recent interview with Doug Carter from radio that has not, surprisingly enough, been in recent or er, in circulation. All right, here we go. The guy in custody, Richard Allen, is he the only person being looked at in this investigation? Uh, uh, right now, he's the one. In the, he's the one that's been said that that has, that's now facing murder charges. So, again, we are not going to stop looking at other people until this is completely done, and we have nothing left to do. One of the things that I've heard is why not release the cause of death? Not because people are morbidly curious, but if they knew they were looking for somebody that was either a, a stab or a gunshot, maybe they know somebody that sold the gun, sold the knife. Maybe they could find the weapon somewhere. What's the rationale for not releasing the official cause of death? Because the individual or individuals that did it, um, only they, they know what they did. And I'm trying to think of the, the right way to say this. Has that slowed down the investigation? Because I think the public, with all of their tips, has been a big help in this. Wouldn't it make sense to have the public looking for the possible weapon? I don't think at this point it would. I, again, I, uh, functionally, I understand the question, Hammer. I really do understand it. And we're going to look back on this and, and probably realize, dang, I wish we'd have done A, B, and C rather than B and E. We can't talk about what we think. I've said this many times before. We, you should expect us expect us to only talk about what we know, and that even changes more so uh, once there's a probable cause affidavit signed by a judge for the arrest of an individual, not just Richard Allen, but in any criminal case, especially a complex criminal case. This case is unlike any that I've seen in an almost a forty year career. So there are so many different tentacles to this. It's very, it's a very, it's very complex. The other wow. name that's involved in this whole story is Kagan Klein. Now, he has not been charged with anything in regards to the murders of these beautiful young ladies in Delphi. We know that he had some sort of uh, communication with one of the ladies the day before they passed away. Has he been speaking to police? Has he 
been given some sort of plea deal to help police. We'll continue to work, work on Keegan Klein. All right, so. Okay, so I wasn't sure if that was going to stop or not. So I can't, I'm so surprised that this has not been in greater circulation. So I think some of the things that he said there were absolutely surprising. Like at the end of that interview when Doug Carter was talking, when he said, this is a very complex case. There's a lot of tentacles to the case. It's perhaps the most, I think this is, I'm paraphrasing a little bit. I think he said it's perhaps, or he said it is the most complex case that I've seen in my almost 40 years of service. I just think that's incredible. To me, the wording that he used was extremely intentional. And there were certain points, and we're going to listen to that again, because I think that, as I often say, there's a lot to unpack or a lot to unwrap there, you know? I think when at certain points in the interview, he's kind of stumbling over his words, stuttering a little bit. And I think at those points, as I listened to this several times, he's not sure of the exact terminology to use. And when he does speak clearly and confidently, in my opinion, he's choosing his words very carefully. And I think that it absolutely, A, implicates Keegan Klein, and B, implicates other persons, but more so and possibly even more shocking than just Keegan Klein. I believe it implicates more persons than just Keegan Klein. What do you guys think? I'm going to put, I don't know if anybody wants to come up. Yarn and Mittens, did you want to come up? I can't, um, not sure if you did or not, but I'm going to put the link in chat if you do want to come up. Um, so if you just want to tell us on the microphone there what you think, <laughs> you can go ahead and do so, okay? All right. So uh, let me see. Hey, Laughing Sock, how are you? Yes, the tentacles. That was, I thought that was a really wild term for him to use. Um, Zyra says, remember Keegan's Dropbox started the largest pedo search in all of the state of Indiana. Yes, Zyra, you're the one that sent that to me, right? I don't know if you've seen the recent videos that I uploaded, but I talked about that a couple times in the videos and I actually used the link that you sent me um, as some visuals and the page you referred me to, page 52. Thank you so much for that. That was amazing. Um, let's see. Hi, Butterfly McCoy. How are you doing? Butterfly says, oh, hey, Watts crew. So happy to see and be here with all of you. We're happy you're here too, Butterfly McCoy. Nice to see you. Um, I really like your channel, by the way. Butterfly McCoy has a channel, guys. Go check it out. I definitely recommend it. Um, who else came in? Hi, Gregory. How are you doing? It's awesome to see you. Hi, Tony B. Sweet soul. How are you doing? Uh, let's see. Who else? I just don't want to miss anybody. See, do, 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 do. Okay. Um, if I did miss anybody, just say hello. We'll say hello back. So I'm going to bring up Yarn and Mittens. Yarn and Mittens is, I consider her absolutely to be an expert on the Delphi case. I get a lot of information from Yarn and Mittens. Hi, Midge. How are you? Midge, I've been meaning to email you. Um, I know you left the last chat and it was, there's some like contentious thing. So I'm sorry about that, Midge. You know that I really appreciate and value you. So I'm sorry if you felt uncomfortable. Okay. Um, yes. Oh, thank you. Hey, thank you so much, Suspicious. Yes, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So everybody, welcome Yarn and Mittens. Let's see. Oh, I want us to be the same size. How do I do? There we go. Oh. Hey, girl. How you doing? Hey, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. What's up? So what are you thinking? Well, I think absolutely that... Um, Keegan Klein is involved and I think that we're going to find his involvement to be much thicker than previously supposed. If you read the transcripts between him and the detectives, investigators, feds, the degree at which he lies is mm -hmm. incredible how yes. these men don't lose it i'll never understand they but have incredible patience they do they, yeah <laughs> i wouldn't i wouldn't be cut out for it but it, what's fascinating is he puts himself out there as someone who is a very low intellect 
and clearly he is not. His ability to master all that he has with the internet, with, um, you know, the phones and the CP rings that he's clearly yeah. involved in. I mean, we know that he is not a stupid, I mean, I hate to call him a man, but you know. What we'll I'm call saying. him a boy thing. <laughs> <laughs> we'll <call it boy. laughs> um, I clearly he's intelligent and they know that about him and they clearly say to him repeatedly you're lying to us we know you're lying to us and what was fascinating when they went into the river at Wabash and they were looking for quote unquote something now right up until that what we know factually is that the feds had been at the CVS and other places mm -hmm. um, in Delphi and were looking for this, I forget what they call it again. It's this half circle knife um, sort of reminds me of um, what you use for winnowing wheat, you know, but on a much smaller mm -hmm. scale. But they were now, 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 how did you hear about that again? Can you repeat that? Who the feds had gone into CVS. Now, this came out on one of the interviews that they do on the news because before um, they were squashed, uh, the CVS workers were squashed. One of the workers in the pharmacy. Um, came out and said that the feds had come in and asked if CVS store sold these specific knives. And they're, um, I have lupus and so I have a problem with remembering certain words. So help me out. What is the, the knife that you use um, when you're winnowing wheat? It's a sharp object and it's shaped like a hook at one end. But it's, it's like, like a sickle, like a sickle? Not a sickle. I want to say um, scythe, but I don't think yeah. I'm saying it right. So I'm, I'll, I'll look it up at some point because I have lupus too. No, <laughs> we won't blame it. <laughs> I do know. Yeah, yarn, yarn and mittens and I are forever bonded in our in our <laughs> shared condition. Aww. So they specific, and why would they ask that? And if you go and look in, um, when they went into ronald logan's um home to do the um the search mm -hmm. on his property if you read the itemized section of what they were looking for they were looking for sharp tools sharp weapons um if we put everything together we understand that the girls were found with a lot of blood on them now if we go farther than this if anyone's interested wait just one second it, just be just be a little bit careful about what you say because i've got you two up my shizzle so just i and, and what you said is fine so far i just know where this goes well here's so. where I, what i'm gonna do is what i just started to do i'm gonna preface everything i say with asking if you want it first okay and thank then you, you <laughs> let me know that way i'm not stepping on toes and in the youtube room all of the wonderful people in the room can decide if they want to hear that now six years ago remember this story is old and being older myself i remember this story back then the way that i do today and there were things that had leaked back then as well which you can and you do hear about, but you really have to search for this information. A lot of them are kind of covered up. Yeah, you're right. Yep. Right. But they are out there and they are, um, they're not questionable. They're, they're part of reality. And we know factually that knives were used. Mm -hmm. And if anybody's interested in knowing, no. Okay. So we'll bypass that <laughs> okay okay um, 
just it's sufficient to say that the weapon of choice was oh i was i'm sorry i wasn't shaking my head no to you i was shaking my head no to my son <laughs> oh <laughs> <laughs> he was trying to get my attention i was like not a good time i'm sorry oh. go ahead <laughs> well what i was going to say was we know that again six years ago that it that the there was factual evidence that slipped out that um uh a knife was the weapon of choice because of what was discovered when the girls were found there was a female search and rescue that had come upon the scene of the mm -hmm. girls and she saw the weapon and and um it's nothing gory or, or anything like that um mm -hmm. i wouldn't share anything like that but one of these objects was seen now what's fascinating for anybody who remembers the story of elizabeth and lyric mm -hmm. the same object was found when their bodies were discovered oh okay wow well so there's a lot that links those two stories together for anybody that sort of had that question if you want to go down that road just sort of throw that out at you but i'm going to hand it back over to you um, okay okay yeah sorry i was just reading some things in chat so so that's interesting you were talking about the um search warrant to search ron logan's house so i Let's see. I don't know if. Uh... Yeah, let me. Should I read through some of this? Yeah. Some of the relevant parts. OK, great. So let me pull this up under the screen. So um, the podcast murder sheets obtained a lot of information, a lot of documentation about this case. And fortunately, it is available to us. It has murder sheets, the name of the podcast kind of watermarked across it. So when you see that, that's just what's going on here with this. So here, well, here's the, the warrant for the search of Ron Logan's house, okay? Right. So I'm just going to start to read it. I'm going to skip the um, first couple paragraphs or just technicalities having to do with the FBI agent who did the search and how they obtained the warrant. I'm, uh, nope. And then this is about the crime, which is also, in, you know, interesting, but it's, there are things that we already know and are widely available by other sources. All right. So, Okay. Let me just get down to the most relevant part. Is this coming through on the stream? I want to make sure it is. Yes, yeah, it, it is. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let me, can I make it a little bit bigger? Yeah, it's just, okay. Yeah, that's what we get. <laughs> Thank you, StreamYard. You're awesome. We love you. All right. Um, okay. Item number six on the Ron Logan search warrant. It was discovered. Whoops. Hold on. I just hit something. Yeah. Get to item number six. <sighs> it was discovered that the redacted of one of the victims was missing from the crime scene while she was while the rest of her clothing was recovered it also appears the girls bodies were moved and staged based upon my training and experience it is common for perpetrators of this type of crime to take a souvenir or in some fashion memorialize a crime scene whether by photos or electronic or digital methods that are then downloaded onto computers, storage devices, tablets, phones, iPad devices, or other electronic things that you can later view. There, I just ended that with a paraphrase. Um, here's something else that's important that I think a lot of people forget about this case. During the process, during the processing of the crime scene, investigators located unknown fibers and identify, unidentified hairs, which may later be used for comparison of similar fibers or hairs. Now, remember when they removed items from Richard Allen's house, onlookers and neighbors that saw this happening said that they brought two big bundles of something. They were certain that it was fabric, that it was cloth material, but they weren't able to, at the distance they were at and the way they were carried out to identify exactly what they were. Ron, uh, now going to number item number nine, Logan owns numerous weapons, including handguns and knives that were observed by LEOs during the execution of the search warrant that took place at his home on March 6, 2017. So this is less than one month after the murders. And this um, search warrant document is of, you know, the contemporaneous time. Logan's home was searched as a result of a probation violation. The search was limited to the discovery of firearms, and included only his main residence. 
Um, okay, so let's get so some of these information about Ron Logan. While it's interesting, it has later been proven to be not really relevant. Um, like his story about going to the aquarium. That's really not what he did. He had a revoked license. So apparently, and unless he was involved, if he was not involved, it seems that he just wanted to tell invest. He didn't want to tell investigators that he was driving because he had a revoked license. I mean, we all have our own priorities, right? <laughs> Um, let's see. So someone is saying that when they first, they first saw the picture of bridge guy, they thought it looked like Ron Logan. Here's another interesting fact. Item 22 on the search warrant affidavit, a call placed using Logan's cell phone produced cell tower data that shows Logan's cell phone appears to be in or around his property on February 13th, 2017 at 2.09 p.m. Although his exact location cannot be identified, the tower data shows that Logan's cell phone was in Delphi area and in the area of the High Monon Bridge Trail. An analysis of Logan's cell phone data revealed a text message sent from his phone at 7.56 p.m. on February 13th, 2017. Initial examination of this Analysis indicates Logan's phone was likely outside of his residence and in the approx in the proximity of where LG and AW's bodies were found. So at 756, according to cell phone data, they determined that Ron Logan's phone was likely in the area where Libby German and Abby Williams' bodies were found. That's a big deal. An analysis of Logan's cell phone data revealed a text message received by his phone at 10.16 p.m. on February 13, 2017. Initial exam of this analysis indicates Logan's phone was likely outside of his residence and in the proximity of where LG and AW bodies were located. So we have two times here that are 7.56 and 10.16 p.m., when Ron Logan's phone had signals that placed him near where the bodies were found. What is he doing out there in the dark? Certainly way after, you know, nightfall in February in Indiana. You know, we don't know. Um, let's see. They also said Logan was able to get up and down the hill. Um, let's see. Can I clarify this? one thing um, in Please. chat? So. Yes. I want to make clear so there's no misinformation. The knife that was used in the Delphi crime was not a scythe, but that the knife used was shaped similar to that. So smaller, I mean, a scythe is pretty huge, right? So it's a smaller knife. I'm actually looking up right now. Um, I'm looking up the article for the name of the knife so I can be um, a little bit more accurate for you. Mm -hmm. um, go ahead. It's, oh, it's just, you were right. It's a scythe. I put that in chat. I'm sorry. I didn't say that out loud, though. I looked it up. No, but one, oh. of, the, one of the, someone in chat said, oh, no, a scythe, thinking that that's what was. Oh, doing. and okay. I don't want to put that out there. It's a smaller, it's a handheld knife that gotcha. you would use maybe for hunting. Gotcha. Um, right. So I'm going to look okay. at the name of the knife. Um, okay. So if anybody wants to look it up, they can do that as well. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. So let's see, going back to this search warrant affidavit. Um, uh, so I think that the rest, yeah, the rest of this, I think is not so much relevant to what we know now. So I want to keep it narrowed down to that, but it's interesting nonetheless. Now uh, let's see. The Rockaways, and welcome Rockaways, nice to see you. Um, welcome to Wasi Obsession Chat and live stream says, in the area of his freaking house in a small town with two cell towers where they can't triangulate anything accurate. That might be true, but there is, you know, I talked about this a lot when covering the Watts case, because um, I did work in, I was a site acquisition specialist and for five years working for, well, my client was Verizon, I was working for a private company, but anyhow, you know, they can do triangulation and they can also do a GPS location. In 2017, they were also to use a technology called a GPS, which means assisted GPS. And I don't want to get super nerdy into it, but um, it will, 
it, it will it will give you a more accurate location even if gps is disabled on that device which it really is not ever um regardless i don't want to go down that road but i would have to personally hi little one oh look i got a bunny i caught a bunny we call her medium bunny oh is she freaking out okay hi medium it's okay we are all right <laughs> came over to say hi <laughs> um <laughs> so if i pick up a bunny <laughs> um so yeah, so there's that. Okay, so we have a few more people in chat here. So I want to just play again um, another time the audio of the recent radio interview with Doug Carter and just listen to what he says. And again, this radio interview is really not been circulated around too much. I don't know why that is because he says some very interesting things. So let's just take a listen here. Here, let me bring it to the stream like this so I can... Let's see. Okay, perfect. Great. Okay, so again, this is a recent interview of Doug Carter from a radio channel that has not been in high circulation for some strange reason. It's really, it seems really arbitrary to me. Some of the really big news that makes headlines in this case and that which doesn't. It's just very curious. The, only person, the guy in custody, Richard Allen, is he the only person being looked at in this investigation? Uh, uh, right now, he's the one. The, he's the one that's been faced that, that has, that's now facing murder charges. So, again, we are not going to stop looking at other people until this is completely done, and we have nothing left to do. One of the things that I've heard is why not release the cause of death? Not it's only two minutes. Listen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this through one time. All right. Then I'm going to play it through again where I want to pause at certain points. So we together, all of us together can break it down because I just think there's really so much to break down in here. I'm also going to put the link to the panel in chat. If anyone does want to come up, you're welcome to come up. Okay because people were morbidly curious, but if they knew they were looking for somebody that was either a, a stab or a gunshot, maybe they know somebody that sold the gun, sold the knife. Maybe they could find the weapon somewhere. What's the rationale for not releasing the official cause of death? Because the individual or individuals that did it, um, only they, they know what they did. And I'm trying to think of the, the right way to say this. Has that slowed down the investigation? Because I think the public, with all of their tips, has been a big help in this. Wouldn't it make sense to have the public looking for the possible weapon? I don't think at this point it would. I, again, I, uh, functionally, I understand the question, Hammer. I really do understand it. And we're going to look back on this and, and probably realize, dang, I wish we'd have done A, B, and C rather than B and E. We can't talk about what we think. I've said this many times yeah. before. We, you should expect us expect us to only talk about what we know, and that even changes more so uh, once there's a probable cause affidavit signed by a arrest an individual, not just Richard Allen, but in any criminal case, especially a complex criminal case. This case is unlike any that I've seen in an almost a forty year career. So there are so many different tentacles to this. It's very, it's a very, it's very complex. The other wow. name that's involved in this whole story is Kagan Klein. Now, he has not been charged with anything in regards to the murders of these beautiful young ladies in Delphi. We know that he had some sort of uh, communication with one of the ladies the day before they passed away. Has he been speaking to police? Has he been given some sort of plea deal to help police? We'll continue to work on Kagan Klein. All right. I think that's it. Okay, here. So hold that. I was just updating something there. All right. Um, all right. So I don't know, guys. All right. So, oh, wait. Okay. So, oh, no. Did I put that in hold? Did I, I can't remember if I put the link in chat or not. Oh, my gosh. All right. So now I'm going to play it through just one more time. And I'm going to pause at certain points so we can kind of break it down and discuss what's going on. Were you going to say something, Yarn and Mittens? Yeah, the knife, in case anybody didn't read it in chat, is a gut knife. 
Okay, gosh. What a wonderful name of a knife. Damn. Right. Rockaways um, had already kind of figured that one out. Um, but he was under the impression it's an internet rumor. It is not a rumor. It's been verified um, by numerous people who saw the detectives that were going from place to place inquiring as to whether or not any of the stores sold this specific knife to try to figure out where it came from. It was yeah. not the only weapon that was used, but it was one of them. And so, and I get, again, to give you an idea, it's used to disembowel. Okay, and a boop. <laughs> boop, boop. I'm, thinking oh, animals. Oh, oh, I'm thinking of animals, not people. Oh, oh sorry. Wait, no, I'm like, <laughs> boop, boop. remember when I said it's for hunting? <laughs> yes, that's right. It's a, it's a hunting knife. We're going to leave it at that because <laughs> you, YouTube's been loving me lately. Woo. Yeah, um, so, you know, actually, you know what I'm going to do before we go and listen to that again and kind of break it down? I just want to play a little bit of a video that I put out this week. You guys may have watched this, so I don't want to be repetitive for those that did. But it's the video that was the last one that I put out that says connecting all of the Delphi dots and the connections between Richard Allen and Keegan Klein. Now, I had so many comments, Yarn and I know you saw this, um, to this video saying, oh, like this is clickbait, like this is old news, none of this is, or none of this is true. First of all, a lot of it was not old news at all. Yes, of course. We went over some of the old details in order to establish a context for what is going on now that needs to be done, right? Um, but I mean, and as far as some of it like not being relevant or not proving a connection between Keegan Klein and Richard Allen, I mean, I, I want to know what you guys think. I think it absolutely proves a connection. Now, Caleb Lee, we're asking for a rundown of this case. It is very complex. Um Abby Williams and Liberty German, ages 13 and 14 years old, lived in a very small town of Delphi, Indiana. Town was under 3,000 people. Almost six years ago now, they were murdered tragically. And until just a couple weeks ago, not even, no, a couple weeks ago, nobody had been arrested with charges related to the case. Um, some of what I'm going to play right now is going to give you some additional um, details. And I see some people in chat are helping you out too. She asked for a quickie version of, of the synopsis of this case. And I don't know if it's even possible. So welcome, Caleb Lee. Welcome. Let's see. I want to see a couple other people I just saw come in. Uh, the Rockways, Esther, Downtown Wonder, um, and anybody else who just came in. Welcome. We're so happy you're here. Oops, sorry. Put that up. I am like losing my mind. No, I didn't. Here we go. <laughs> uh, yeah. So in the past week or so, I, on this channel, have created three videos talking about the connection, the possible connection that is, in my opinion, becoming much more likely and substantiated between Richard Allen and Keegan Klein. As I've read through subscriber and viewer comments on the videos, people have contributed some really interesting insight and ideas, and others have questioned what is the connection really? There's obviously no connection here. I don't see how this connection is being made. So I just want to lay it out and make it really clear. And you can, of course, determine for yourself if you think that there is a connection. I personally believe the connection is nearly undeniable. So I want to start by looking at both the beginning, when the murders occurred, and the end when Richard Allen was finally arrested over five years later. Starting with the timeline of how the investigation progressed in the beginning, one of the reasons this timeline of the investigation is so important is because it allows us to know what investigators knew and when, at least some of what investigators knew and when, because there has always been a lot of information in the Delphi murder case that has not been released to the public. So it was, of course, on February 14th, 2017, that the bodies of Liberty German and Abby Williams were found, and it was announced to the public late in that day. On February 15th, investigators found Liberty German's phone 
and found that she had taken a recording of somebody walking down the bridge. This person later became known as Bridge Guy. And police released a grainy still photo of Bridge Guy immediately on February 15th. On February 22nd, Thank police you, released a portion of the audio from the recording on Liberty German's phone. That is the infamous Down the Hill recording. It would not be known by the public until years later that that recording was actually 43 seconds long. Investigators, of course, knew this all along. So investigators had this 43 second recording from God. On July 17th, 2017, about five months on July 17th, 2017, about five months after the murders, police released the first composite sketch of Bridge Guy. It should be noted that all along in these first five months after the murder and in years to come, the family and friends and community of Abby Williams and Libby German were extremely active in getting word out and doing anything and everything that they could to find the murderer and find justice for the two girls. From the day the girls went missing until even now, droves of people were calling in tips and providing information about who they believed was involved in committing these heinous murders. Although some of the information was irrelevant or even false, there are given plenty of information by both the citizens of Delphi, the surrounding community, and literally across the country. According to Indiana State Police Superintendent Doug Carter, the investigation was an active investigation all along. Now, it wasn't until April 22nd, 2019, when investigators released the second composite sketch of the suspect who committed these murders. This definitely threw people for a loop as the second sketch looked much younger than the first and they didn't look too much alike, but we will get back to that a little bit later. There were details that were known to investigators that the public found out later including the fact that an FBI agent had noted in regards to the crime scene that pieces of clothing from one of the victims was missing and that it, quote, appeared the girls' bodies were moved and staged, end quote. They also noted there was no visible signs of a struggle or a fight. Also released later on is that they did recover fibers and unknown hairs from the crime scene. When you consider all that was learned in the very beginning of the investigation that I mentioned along the timeline and the additional information investigators knew that was later revealed to the public, they had access to a lot of information about this killer since literally the day of the murders or the day after the murders. Let's talk about Keegan Klein. Keegan Klein's home in Peru, Indiana was searched on February 23rd, 2017, just 10 days after Abby and Libby were murdered. Cops searched his house on unrelated CP charges at that time. It wasn't until August of 2020 was Keegan Klein arrested on CP and child exploitation charges that resulted in 30 felony charges and a trial scheduled down the road. Investigators interviewed Keegan Klein after his arrest and questioned him about the charges and who may have had access to his electronic devices. While they focused on questioning him about his dad, he vehemently denied that his father had any access to his electronic devices, saying that he wouldn't let him have his electronic devices for very long. Oops. Wait a minute. I don't know what just happened here. Hold it. Oh. Keegan Klein admitted to talking to Libby German under the Anthony Schatz social media profile. He said that he did not talk to her the day before or the day of the murders. The Anthony profile social media persona was scheduled to meet 
Libby on the day of the murders, and King Klein also vehemently denied that it was him behind the Anthony Schatz profile talking to Libby. Police gave Keegan Klein a polygraph examination to which the polygraph test rendered truthful when Keegan Klein said that he had not talked to Libby using the Anthony Schott social media profile for two weeks before the murders. Again, the polygraph results said that he was truthful in that statement of not talking to her two weeks before the murders. On the same polygraph exam, when Keegan Klein was asked if he knew who committed the murders, to which he answered no, the polygraph results deceptive. Now, let's fast forward to August of 2022. In August of 2022, it was learned that investigators were searching the Wabash River just two miles from where Keegan Klein lived. This search went on for five weeks, and the search of the Wabash River was the event that intensified the search in the Delphi murder case that eventually led up to the arrest of Richard Allen on October 26, 2022. Now, what was the catalyst that caused investigators to search the river in the first place? Well, we didn't know what that was until just yesterday, November 15, 2022. When a police source had confirmed to News Channel 8 that the recent five-week state police search of the Wabash River in Peru was connected to the Delphi investigation. Connection, connection. Now remember, it's the search of the Wabash River in August of 2022 that intensified the investigation that eventually led up to the arrest of Richard Allen a little over two months later. The police source goes on to say that the search was initiated after Keegan Klein told police they would find a cell phone and a weapon in the river. That evidence was, in fact, never found, and Klein is known for lying to investigators, so we do need to know more about this bit of information before making a conclusive judgment on this information. Now, regardless of whether Keegan Klein was lying or not about knowing that there was a cell phone and a weapon in the Wabash River, this is what I believe is important. Again, it's this five-week search of the Wabash River that intensified the investigation that just two and a half months later, after well over five years, an arrest was made with charges of two counts of murder for the murder of Abby Williams and Liberty German. In my opinion, it's like this. Although Keegan Klein may not have given investigators correct information that led them to finding Richard Allen finally, which led to his arrest, I believe telling them that they needed to search the Wabash River because there was a cell phone and weapon in there was either, you know, maybe the beginning or the middle of Keegan Klein throwing things out to investigators, perhaps an effort to play games with them that ultimately led to Keegan Klein giving them good information that led to the arrest of Richard Allen. The timing is just too coincidental for me. Is this all enough to convince you that there was a connection between Keegan Klein and Richard Allen? Well, wait, there's more. Now remember, there were 30 child sexual abuse and child exploitation felony charges against Keegan Klein. And the timing is like this. Prosecutors filed a motion just days after Richard Allen was arrested for some of those charges to be dropped. And, and another request has been filed to downgrade the remaining charges. The charges of child sexual abuse and child exploitation, felony charges, all of them. So here's a quote from the prosecutor's office. There is insufficient evidence to prove that counts beyond a reasonable doubt at trial. What? 
if you're thinking this timing is extremely suspicious, you're definitely not alone. So what if the polygraph exam results were correct in saying that Keegan Klein was being truthful when he said he hadn't talked to Libby through the Anthony Schatz profile in two weeks before the murders? Well, we know that someone was talking to Libby through the Anthony Schatz profile and was, in fact, one of the last persons to talk to Libby before the death of Abby and Libby. So who was that then? It had to be somebody. Phone records don't lie. Could it have been Richard Allen? Because Richard Allen was arrested for murdering Abby and Libby. And these murders happened on the very same day the person using the Anthony Schott social media profile was supposed to meet Libby while she was on her hike with Abby on the Monon High Bridge Trail. Coincidence enough for you? This is way too many coincidences for me. I'll say it again. If Richard Allen's arrest wasn't enough to convince someone that he was there on the Monon High Bridge Trail and committed the murders, well, we also have this, another tot to connect. It is that um, Richard Allen, who was arrested in the murders of Abby Williams and Liberty German, had told a state conservation officer he was in the area on the day of the killing, but his report may have been considered unfounded. And this is a police source telling News Channel 8. So Richard Allen, you know he's age 50, apparently went to the conservation officer right after Abby and Libby's murders on February 17th, 2017. And he told the conservation officer that he was on the Monon High Bridge that afternoon, but he didn't see the two girls. Again, this is what the police source tells News Team 8. So apparently, Allen's statement was forgotten until recently when Indiana police became frustrated when the status of the Delphi investigation and they asked a group of investigators to look over some files that were related to the case. So this article also says that investigators believe Alan is the man on the bridge in the cell phone video and in the sketches released by police. And again, this is a police source telling News Team 8. If you can't believe what you heard, you probably did hear it right. Richard Allen himself put himself on the Monon High Bridge Trail on the day of the murders, the afternoon of the murders, when it was the afternoon when Libby and Abby went on their hike. And he told a conservation officer of this on February 17th, 2017, just a couple days after the murders. And I mean, ugh, come on, guys. Okay, so let's start to wrap this up. Wrap up why connecting all of these dots leads one to an understanding that Richard Allen and Keegan Klein were, in fact, connected. Let's again talk about the size of Delphi, Indiana. Delphi, Indiana is 2.51 square miles, very small in size. And the population, as of the 2020 census, is 2,975 people. That's less than 3,000 people. I need to put that into perspective. Think of a sports stadium that holds tens of thousands of people. Or perhaps your high school had a student body of this size. Most colleges and universities certainly have a student body much larger than the population <laughs> of Delphi, less than 3,000 people. Richard Allen was one of those residents of Delphi, Indiana, one of those 2,975 people, and he lived very close to Li Liberty, and he worked right in town in the only pharmacy 
that there is in Delphi, Indiana, is a pharmacy technician who interacted regularly with the public. He was highly visible. Many residents of Delphi knew Richard Allen. You can find their interviews on various news channels by just doing a quick search right now and hear them speak. So it's not as though this guy was hiding under a rock or hiding in a boarded up house. He was very much out there. His face was out there. He was out in the public, working with the public, talking to the public with his voice that said down the hill. <laughs> in that same voice, it doesn't seem to me like he disguised it that much when you do a voice comparison of Richard Allen's voice samples to the down the hill audio sample. They sound very much alike, and they look very much alike when you look at the audiograph. Now, I'm not trying to knock on Doug Carter. I'm not trying to knock on investigators necessarily. But man, in a town of under 3,000 people, in well over five years, investigators from various organizations were not able to make an arrest for the murders of a 13 and 14 year old girl in over five years, well over five years. I just think guys, that's freaking incredible, especially considering the murder suspect went to an officer three days after the murders and said, I was in that exact spot. The girls were last known to be the, the exact time the girls were known to be there but I didn't see them and the investigators lost the files. So regardless of what the investigators may or may not have done wrong, we must remember the overall timing when we look at this case. Over five and a half years, nothing, not a single arrest directly related to the murders of a 13 and 14 year old girl. Keegan Klein has been in jail for a couple of years. He is released from prison in August 2022, which starts the investigation of the Wabash River, which starts the intensification of the investigation back up, which leads to the arrest of Richard Allen just two and a half months later. Days later, prosecutors drop five of the 30 felony charges and make a statement saying that they're looking to reduce the rest of them. And days later after that, it's finally released to the public that it was in fact Keegan Klein that initiated that search of the Wabash River by telling investigators that there was a cell phone and a weapon in the river. Okay, so let's connect the dots here, putting everything together that has been mentioned in this video and some <clears> other <throat> facts you might know about the Delphi case <clears throat> I didn't even mention here. What is the most reasonable conclusion you can make? Is there a connection between Keegan Klein and Richard Allen? Or can you seriously say there's no connection? Whatever the answer to the question, is there a connection? Maybe what we ultimately want is justice for Abby and Libby. <clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> I wasn't going to play the whole video. I ended up playing the whole thing, though, because I just couldn't find a, stop, a point to stop it because I think that all of that, well, of course I think that. That's why I made the video. Um, I spent a lot of time putting that together very systematically to try to make the connection very clear. Um, and I'm just interested in what you guys think. CCTV. Hey, girl. Aw, I was just thinking about you earlier. I texted you the other day. I don't think you got back to me. I was worried about you, and I'm so glad to see you. <laughs> All right. Yes. Something that I think would be very helpful. I'm noticing in chat, um, Ara was surprised at something that Rockaway shared. Mm -hmm. And some of the other chatters are having some surprises as well. It yeah. would be really helpful if they were able to um, 
read the transcription. So here was a thought I had. Uh -huh. If we were interested, we could read them um, to yes. chat back and forth. Sort of good idea. Some life, kind of a bit like a play, so that they yeah. get a bit of intonation. They get, they get um, sort of the feeling, the drama of what's mm -hmm. going on. Do you um, want to do that now? Well, it's up to you. I don't mind. Um, yeah, I'm would good. they be open to that? And would Ara be willing to play one part? Um, there's <laughs> two major parts, and there's one small one. If she, if she doesn't want to do a lot, <laughs> we're, we we're can doing take the small or, for, yes <laughs> auditions. <laughs> or I'll take the small part. I don't mind. Okay, I'll I'll do whatever. All right, cool. Yeah, I think that'd be a good idea. Are you guys interested in that chat? I just got, I have the transcript up right now, so we are more than capable of doing that. I was actually thinking about that earlier too. That's that's a good idea, Yarn Mans. <clears throat> yeah, I think if everybody could hear it and understand yes. what he's doing and what he's being uh, um, not charged with, but mm -hmm. what they want to charge him with. However, there's a little problem. They need him to point the finger at Richard Allen. So they're handling yes. him with kit gloves, and you don't yep. get all of that until you read the transcripts. That's right. Yeah, I think that's a really good idea. I will definitely do that. I just I want to answer this question from Butterfly McCoy. Okay. Says, "What's the obsession?" I watched this video when you published it. I'm new to the case, watching because of my faith in your judgment. Hey, thank you. I appreciate that. May I ask what your theory is, and do you feel Ellie is covering up? Okay, so I don't feel that law enforcement is covering up in the way that I believe personally that they did in the Watts case or the Kylie Rodney case, let's say, I know that you're familiar with both of those cases. Um, but I mean, as I indicated in this video, I definitely do think they screwed up. I mean, I think one of the main points of this video, well, there's several main points, but one of them is Delphi is a town of under 3000 people, 2.61 square miles. That is so freaking small. Richard Allen lived adjacent to one of the girls yards he worked in the CVS where he was a pharmacy technician. As somebody made the point in chat, he public he he printed the pictures for Patty Allen, um, Libby's grandmother, the pictures that were going on the missing persons posters for free. He was he was obviously interfacing on a regular basis with all of the other people in the community, not a single one who is not seriously concerned with finding the murders of these two girls, including the family and friends. The fact that it took them almost six years to find this guy is stunning. I just, I can't get over that. Um, I think that, yeah, isn't that crazy? Yeah. Um, I think that, uh, I think that Keegan Klein is, Oh, uh oh, my earbuds are low battery. Well, that's okay because if we're not watching a video, I can, uh, uh, I can charge them. Okay. Um, so I think Keegan Klein was involved somehow. I don't know exactly how that is. I think that there's a lot of things that indicate that, but I think most importantly to me is when <clears throat> the search of the Wabash River started in just this past August, August of 2022, Keegan Klein was released from prison. To go on the scene with investigators, Keegan Klein met federal agents at an Air Force base in Indiana to do what? To to play like, you know, like, I don't know, I, something that's not important with them. I can't think of a game. <laughs> you know, there was obviously a reason that he was released from prison. He was taken to a scene. He met with federal agents in an Air Force base to do what? I think that is no coincidence that let's let's think of the timeline. Look at the span of six years and then hold it. I've got to change my uh, audio here really quick. Hmm. Okay. Let me know if my audio is okay. So I don't think it's a coincidence that after the span of almost six years, absolutely nothing like really big happened. You know, they did the search of Ron Logan's house uh, like a month after the murders that was fruitless. Um, you know, they arrested Keegan Klein in 2020 on, on unrelated charges, disgusting charges, but yeah, unrelated charges. And it wasn't until almost six years later that things started speeding up, starting with Keegan Klein meeting federal agents at the Air Force Base, being released from prison, taking them to the uh, taking them to somewhere near the near the Wabash River. And we just found out giving them information that he said a cell phone 
and a weapon was in the river. Well, it's almost six years later. What are the chances that they're even going to find that? And then less or a little over two months later, Alan is arrested. We also have the interview with, with um, Doug Carter. And you know what? That's only two minutes. Let me just play that again. And um, yeah, so we can hear what he said. Because I think the interview with Doug Carter also indicates that Keegan Klein was involved. And certainly that someone else was involved. So <clears throat> let's see. Where did I put that video? I'm singing the, the place of uh, Keegan Klein. What's that? I'm seeking the part of Keegan Klein. Okay, you got it. I'll be the investigator. Rockaways is voting for me to have a Snickers and to chew loudly. And I vote, <laughs> and I vote in a few belches. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so crazy. Oops. I like this Rockaways. This, yeah, I like Rockways too. Rockways has some terrific information too. Actually, you know what? Oh, good. I'm glad Butterfly McCoy. You know what? Let's 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 do let's read let's do the reading of the transcript. I don't know if we're, it's really long. Um, we'll see how well we'll see we'll see how far we get with it. Maybe it's not as long as I think it is because it's written in like a script form. So let me bring that into the stream here. <clears throat> All right. And then just give me just one second. I don't know if you have any comments you can read or anything. I just got to go get a drink really quick if I'm going to be reading. How's everybody doing tonight? The room is getting fuller. Cool. More full, I should say. <laughs> Thank goodness we don't have anybody correcting my grammar. I think either works just fine. All right. <laughs> so. Okay. So let's see here. All right. So let's see. I am, I'm Q and you're A. All right. Um, how in the world am I going to see this? I don't know. Um, can you bring oh, a copy up? Can you pull up a, are you on the computer, on a computer right now? Yes, I am. Can you pull up a copy yourself? You, we can each have our own copy. You mean print it? No, just pull it up on a computer screen, like in a different window. Oh, okay. You can have a different window open and still be reading it. Your audio will still be working. You won't be able to see comments or anything. But if you're reading, I personally can't read and see comments at the same time. But let's see. Um, Oceans and Oceans 1111. Uh, welcome. How are you doing? I'm glad you're here. Says, I can't help but think that Logan let them use his home for whatever they did. Oh, God. Took photos, etc. Then brought them back out to the woods. To stage a crime, you know, I honestly had never thought of that, but the fact that, you know, we have his phone pinging out near where they were found at, what was it, like 7.56 and 10.16 p.m. the night of the 13th. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yikes. Oh, God, it's, just, it's hard to think about what may have happened. It's, you know, it's just a, it's a terrible, terrible crime. Is, um, is she going to come up to play the part of the third character? Who's that, she Ara? Said sure. Yeah, she said sure. She oh, yeah, to totally. All right, cool. So the third character, so here, I copy that, copy and paste. All righty. <clears throat> All right, so... Um, go ahead, come on up, Ara, and let me see. So the third part is going to be, so we've got Q and A, and then I think it's B. Wait, did I just go by it? Oh. Okay. Deputy Clinton. Is it Deputy Clinton? Yes. Okay, so you're Deputy Clinton. Very, It's a very bit part. Deputy Clinton says, like, one thing. No. It, oh, it says a couple things. Okay, all right. Yeah, he threw out it. That's why I said if she wanted to play a bigger part, I'll play the smaller one. I'm I'm willing to do whatever. All right. So it's your call. All right. Let me just get up to the beginning here. Let's see. Um, all right. So I put the link in chat. Let's start reading it just so we can get going on that. And then when Ara is or who is backstage, I'll let her up. Okay. Okay. Um, so, oh, Jeannie uh, said she would come up too. So I don't know. Is Ara there? Um, I don't see her speaking. You know what I'll do? 
when when we get when we get to um deputy clinton's role i will put the link in chat again and then Jeannie, if if r doesn't come up i would love for you to come up if you don't mind that'd be amazing thank you darlin so all right so you do you have a copy up yeah what is, this is q a is this um farther down below i think it's officer and keegan or is it just q a i think it's just q a all right fine Okay, I'm okay. ready for you. All right. So the uh, officer enters the room. Here you go, brother. Thank you. Isn't it? Appreciate it. Oh, I'll I'll pull that back. I think I have it upside down. I think that's a problem. Might get you a. I'll I'll see what they say. I might get you uh get you another one. One of those. I got one like this. It might be easier to. Like, oh, sorry, inaudible. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Like, talk out of inaudible. Yeah, as soon as they get in here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna head out. But I appreciate you being cooperative, and we're we're backwards. Yeah. So. Oh wait, I'm sorry. We're backwards. Okay. <laughs> 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 all right, all right. I'm gonna pick up back with questioning. Okay, so yeah, as soon as I get in here, I'm gonna I'm gonna head out. But I appreciate you being cooperative and yeah, quiet, easygoing on the way up here. Yeah, no problem. I know you guys deal with probably all kinds of crazy people. Well, there's some, but there's a lot of good people too. Right. But yeah, I'd say you're on the list of eventful people that I've arrested. You're way down at the bottom as far as eventful. It was yeah, kind of a non-issue. I mean, right, which is good. Yeah. You want me to take that from you or you want to hold it? Uh, I can hold it if you. No, that's fine. I just didn't know if you were. I don't know if you can reach the table with it if you wanted to set it down or not probably have to lean forward but yeah tell you what i'll go make you i'll i'll go get you a mask while we're sitting here before i leave since i got it in the car the officer leaves the room re-enters the interview room hey keegan yeah they said that you're just they're just going to let you talk and take it off when you talk to them are you comfortable with that are you all right I, with that i'm fine with that Okay, they say they're fine with that, too. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay, I just want to make sure, because I'm not going to worry about getting you a mask if... Wait, hold, just one second. Okay, I want to see if that was in the stream. Oh, wait, hold it. Let me... Uh, sorry. I'm trying to do... Hold it. That. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. I appreciate it. Let me uh, get a key. Okay. Officer leaves the room, re-enters the room. All right, brother, let me get those off of you right away. This way I can put them in my truck and I don't leave them. I'll take that. Uh, yeah. You know what? I'm going to get past all this red tape here. This this is a little, like, boring. Um, You know what I mean? I yeah. want to get down to the more juicy stuff. All right. Okay. Here we go. Oh, with 22. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And so we're going to we're going to help you explain all of that. But of course, I have stuff that I have to do for my job and everything. I'm going to read to you some stuff. I'm going to give you a copy just so you can read off of it as well. Um, we're at the the Peru, Indiana State Police Post. I just want to make sure you understand your rights. It's the afternoon. Again, I said my name's Detective Vito with the Indiana State Police. And these are your rights. Before I ask you any questions, you must understand your rights. He reads him his rights. OK, we all know what that is. All right. Um, if you decide to, uh, just reading the rights. Okay. Understand that. Um, this is still red tape. More technical stuff. Okay. All right. Oh boy. YouTube's going to hate me. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, command arrest Keegan A. Klein for it with and hold that person to bail in the amount of no bond to answer the Miami Circuit Court of Miami County in the state of Indiana for information for count one, child exploitation, a level five felony. Count two, possession of CP, a level five felony. 
Count three, possession of more CP, a level five felony. Count four, more possession of CP. There's a lot of CP going on here. He's got a lot of possession of some pretty gross stuff. Lots of possessions of CP, 30 of them to um, be exact. I'm not going to read them 30 times because YouTube will hate me 30 times more. Um, let's see. Count 25, child exploitation, a level four felony. Count 26, synthetic identity deception, a level six felony. Count 27, synthetic ID deception, a level six felony. Count 28, child exploitation, a level five felony. Count 29, child solicitation, a level five felony. Count 30, possession of child CP, a level five felony. And four, inaudible, fail commitment, commit him to the jail of the county and thereafter without any necessary delay to bring him before the court and witness wherefore, and then more technical stuff. All right, I want to get down to the conversation about the crimes. Okay. All right, wait, here we go. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go, okay, I'm starting with uh, line nine on this page. It says, okay, so you, so we watch that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. We understand what's going on. Right. You understand what's going on now. Um, Obviously, you have a problem. All the... Are you talking about all the stuff that was on all those old phones? Is that what this is about? The phones. Mm-hmm. So, like I told that, I can't remember her name. She was like the, I don't know, something with the child division. Um, all those are old videos when I was underage. Well, and and I want I want to make it clear, too. That we not only have watched your interviews, right? But we've personally gone through each device, right? Right. We've watched the videos. Yeah. We've seen the pictures, and I can tell you, you were not underage at the time. Okay. Of all the underage girls I talked to, I was definitely underage for any of those pictures that I got from them. And that's not what the data that we have here. On, on the metadata of those images, I mean, they're time-stamped. Right, right. Log in. Yeah. You know when when we take the, the phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get a lot of information off of that. Right, right. Okay, um, Avi, I, I mean, this is, it's been a little while, obviously, but. And a few of those charges. Can I see that again so I can ask? Yeah, yeah. Which one were you thinking about? Um, it was like, I don't know. I can't remember. I'd have to, sorry, my mind's going crazy right now. Like, uh, what is it? Like, child exploitation? What is that? Like, I've never been with a child before or anything like that. Well, it's not necessarily about being with a child, but when we go to, when you're Anna, is your Kick Chat 92, um, was this your iPhone uh, when you're trading back and forth? Right. Uh, CP images, okay. that's all exploitation of a child. Okay, and obstruction of justice. Um... And we're, we're going get to get to all of that, okay? But I need you to understand why. Right, yeah. Why we're here, obviously. Yeah. And I'm just being honest with you. I mean, the underage thing, it's right. not correct. Right. Okay. Um, three years ago, you were not underage. Right. And you were in possession of all that as well. Right. So I know, even in your last interview, I mean, you have a problem. Right. And you said it yourself. Yeah. And I'm assuming you know problem like that does not... And I'm assuming you know problem like that just does not overnight correct itself. You need to scroll it up. Oh, it says, no, you're right. No, you're right. Um, I moved to Las Vegas and I tried to like completely change my life. And uh-huh. Yeah. And then, you know, I fell on hard times. I didn't have a good job and stuff. So I had to move back. But yeah, I mean, I had I I haven't done any of those stuffs 
since then. That was a real wake up call. Mm. When when did you move to Vegas? Um, I'm not sure what. It was about two years ago. Well, no, I got back about three years ago, probably. Like, I don't know, I think June, maybe. Right after my birthday sometime. It was like right after that. June of 2017? Yeah, yeah. Okay. About, yeah. You know where you are currently living now? Like, where's your residence at? Well. Oh, and that's your girlfriend? Well, I, like, I stay with her sometimes, but I mean, I just bounce around, really. But I mean, she lets me stay there as much as I need to. Okay, um, June 17th, move to Vegas. Where'd you stay out there? I had an apartment. An apartment? Yeah. And, and then, oh, okay. And then I'm just going to read Deputy Clinton. It's just such a bit part. Okay. Um, what was that address, man? Oops. Oh, and then there's a DC too. Oh, Deputy <laughs> Clinton. Okay, I got it. Oh, shoot. Yeah, let's we need a Deputy Clinton. Somebody. You're like, all right, I'll let her figure this out herself. <laughs> all right. Somebody, uh, Jeannie, would you like to come up and be Deputy Clinton? Also um, noted as DC, please. Let's see. <laughs> Rockaway says, it's so realistic. I can smell the ketchup stain on Keegan's shirt and see the pizza crumb. You better be careful before I burp. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, hey, Jeannie. How are you doing, sweetheart? Hey, I'm, uh, I don't know yet. I'm good. I'm good. good. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you for helping out. Are you able to see the screen here to read the script okay? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Ara just said I'm down. I'm sorry, honey. Sorry about that, Ara. No, no, no. Hang on. Oh, Ara, Ara's ready? It, either of you can do it. It's fine. Or you guys can switch or something. Or if I get tired, Ara can take my part. <laughs> Tell Ara to hop on because what I'm seeing is tiny, tiny. Okay, cool. All right, I'll have Ara hop on. Would you hop on, Ara? Thank you, Jeannie. Thank you for being a sport, though. I appreciate You're it. You're welcome. I wish I could. Thank you, Jeannie. Sorry. I'm so That's sorry. Okay. That's all right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, hop on, Ara. Thank you, Ara. Thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> Jeannie's great. Um, Jeannie's the person that sent me the, uh, she works for um, Class Kids, which is a foundation that exclusively looks for missing children and teens, and they're very successful. They have a high rate of finding these children and teens, so we, we thank her for her volunteer service. So, yes. Yeah. Hey, Ara, welcome. How are you doing? Hey, I'm good. How are y'all? I'm good. I'm good. Are you ready to read DC? I am ready. Can you see it or do you have your own copy or what are you doing? Here? I'm, I'm looking at your screen. I just full screened it. Okay, cool. So now this is all uh, you and um, you and Yarn and Mitten. So take it away, okay. guys. Okay. So uh, you start at line four, right? Yes. All right. Uh, do you remember what street? It was on road... Um... It was on one, no, that's my dad's address. I don't know. Something road. Do you remember what apartment number it was? Um, uh, apparently not. It's blacked out. Blacked out. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> live by yourself? Yeah. Oh, wait. <laughs> uh, we need to get into a rhythm here. Live by yourself. Uh, no, I had a friend that I moved out there with. Uh, who's that? At AAPC. Redacted. <laughs> Redacted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, hold it. Let me scroll for you. All right, go. Uh, it's blacked out again. Blacked out yeah, again. At the very top of the screen. Yeah. Number 17. Um, what'd you do for employment out there? Um, a lot of stuff, really. We had like a little um, medical marijuana business that we would do a delivery service with and stuff. A lot of money in that, isn't there? Yeah, there was. A lot of elderly people, you know, that couldn't leave their house a lot and stuff like that. Didn't want to get around and stuff like that. Yeah, elderly people, my ass. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's you, Kelly. Oh, yeah. What caused you to move back? I just couldn't afford it. I mean, rent was so expensive and just everything in general, just so expensive out there. 
Um, so yeah, whoops. <clears throat> um, so yeah, I could definitely see it being more expensive out that way. Oh yeah. Um, and my goal today, I mean, we want to try to, of course, get you to understand everything that's right. Yeah. Going on. And I think there's some things that we need to clear up too. Um, in your, your original interview, I mean, obviously you said it was a problem that you had and yeah. So you're, I mean, you're saying it was a pretty big wake up call and. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, I never really had a problem with the police ever in my life. Major redaction. Wow. Eh, okay. As for the, I wonder what the hell that is. As for the C piece, I mean, it was not like an address or stuff. What was that whole chunk? I want to know. Okay. Anyway, as for the C piece, whoops, hold it. Sorry. As for the CP stuff, I mean, you just stopped. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, I mean, when I realized that, you know, how serious it is. Oh, excuse me. How serious it is in like. Okay. Um, you don't think about it when you're talking to 16 and 17 year old girls. And then you realize when that knocks comes at your door like hey shit's not a joke and we can do now the then um since i mean you haven't viewed it since then or no anything like that no uh would you then give us consent for your phone yeah to search the phone okay mm -hmm. um go ahead do you, do you have any computers or tablets or anything like that at your I have a computer in my room, but I mean, it's not really, it, it's really old, but I mean, yeah, I have one in there. Would you give us consent for that as well? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. Any other electronic media or maybe you like an Xbox or something? Yeah, I have an Xbox. Yeah. Would you give us consent to search that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. Oh, what games are you playing nowadays? Uh, Call of Duty. I don't even know what Call of Duty. Yeah. What? What? Uh, they are on like twenty six. Uh, the new one called Warzone. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Uh, you do it online, like talk sh to kids. Yeah. All the, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I, I used to play until the kids started getting really good. Right. And. Scroll it. That's how it is, you say. Right, but it's not scrolling on my. Oh. That And that's how it is. I get so damn mad. I go through it across the room, right? Yeah. Talk so much, man. He's like 12. Yeah. He's destroying you. Like, no. Yep. Exactly. It's ridiculous. It's the little sturts I grew up with in Nintendo, man. Yeah. I can't. I'm looking at the controllers trying to figure out which button. <laughs> and and we don't have as many as many uh, buttons and stuff. Yeah. Now I feel like I'm getting older and slowing down. Uh, how long you been in Indiana back from Vegas, man? Uh, like a year and a half, probably. Consistently the whole time, or are you just bouncing around? Yeah, well, yeah, pretty much consistent the whole time. Yeah, yeah. Um, and what what phone what what uh, phones do you have at your house? Just an iPhone. Or at the apartment, just an iPhone. Yeah. You know what a uh, model it is? Uh, it's called an SE. Is that like two models back or something, or is that a newer one? It's like the brand new one. You have the iPhone? Yeah. What color is it? Red. Red. It has like a black case. Okay. So. What room? Uh, what room is that in? Uh, that first room. Like all the way in the back. Scroll it, sweetie. I'm I'm scrolling. I think there's a little bit of a lag. No, the one that's closest to the front. Where the TV and stuff was? Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
Um, do you have like that place though? Yeah, yeah. Are you on a lease? No, I. You don't pay and pay rent or nothing. Okay. Uh, how do you pull that off? Well, I. She just lets me stay there, really, when you know when I need to. I tried slumming at a girl's house, man. I get my ass kicked out. Yeah. Um, and you said you have an Xbox. Yeah. Where's that at? What? It's in kind of Xbox. Uh, Xbox One. And what color is it? And black. I know they got tons of them. Yeah. You said a computer. Yeah. What kind of a computer is it? I don't even know, honestly. That's how much I don't even uh, use. I don't even. It might be a gateway, or I'm no an HP. I think an HP. Yeah. It's like a like an all in one, or does it have a tower? It's like a like a just like a rectangle. I don't know. So like, I bought it. Like the disc and everything, it's all on the screen. Yeah, it's all in. So like all in one. Yeah. Touch screen? No, no, I plug it right into my TV. Huh. Well, I got it to think I could play games on it or something because it was a little cheaper. You can't even, like, do anything on it. It's terrible. Really? You can't even, like, really watch, like, Netflix or... Mm. Really? Like... That's weird because that's a streaming... Uh... <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> so many bulls. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, there we yeah, go. Yeah, and I'm like, come on. Oops. Where yeah. are we here? Um. Oh, wait. Oh, hold it. Hold it. Oh, okay. Um. When'd you get it? Six months ago, probably. Huh. Well. Yeah. That's weird. It was only like 150 bucks. Uh, yeah, I was like. Well, you just got to get that. When did you get the iPhone? Uh, they they came out a few months ago, probably two months ago. Two months ago? Yeah. You had the Xbox for a while or? Yeah, about a year and a half probably. Yeah. Uh, what color is that AP? HP? Uh, it's like black and gray. Yeah, I would say it's more gray than black. And what other electronic devices do you have in the house? That's about all I can think. Her phone, that's... What does the girlfriend have, just so we don't... The same phone, iPhone SE. Okay. Yeah. What color is hers, though? Hers is white. Hers is a white one? Yeah. <laughs> Are you... Is she on your plan, or are you on her plan, or? No, no, she's on her own plan. And then you, are you on it? Is it just your plan with your phone, or? Uh, yeah, well, technically, I'm not on a plan right now. I just have text now. Oh, so you're, like, using Wi-Fi for everything? Yeah, because I don't really ever, you know, uh -huh. go anywhere without Wi-Fi, so... And what's your current phone number? Uh, I honestly don't know. I literally <laughs> just got, I, I don't. You don't know your own phone number? Yeah, I know it's a 310 number. It's a Los Angeles number. I'm not sure. 310? Yeah, I'm not even sure. Um, DC. Oh, sorry. Spend, spend, time. Time, spend time in LA too? Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. How long would you do out there? Uh, pretty much the same thing, really. The weed, the weed business. Yeah, yep, it's booming out there. <laughs> yeah, I bet, I bet. It's crazy, yeah. Um, do you have any old phones or anything like that? No. There. No. What did you do with your old phone that you turned in? I sold it on eBay. Okay, and that. Yeah. Was a couple months ago, you said. Yeah, just when I got the phone. Okay. Um, so just the iPhone, Xbox, and then the computer. Uh-huh. 
Um, uh, who's your guy in inter- your guys internet provider? AT and T. AT and T. Yeah. Um, does she pay for that or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she pays for everything. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm going to read you this here. Um, that way you can have consent there, and you can have a copy here. Uh, so obviously at the Peru Indiana Police Station. Whoops. But your devices are located at this uh, address. Uh, these are your rights, and you have the following constitutional rights. You have the right required that required a search warrant to be obtained for any search of your property. You have the right to refuse to consent to a warrantless search. You have the right to talk to a lawyer before giving consent to such a search. If you cannot afford a lawyer, one will be appointed to you. The next parts, if you are a juvenile, which you are not, uh, all your signing statements, I have read this statement of rights, understand what my rights are. I do not want a lawyer at this time. I consent to a warrantless search by officers of the Indiana State Police of the following described property, which we have your red SE iPhone, red with a black case, Xbox, which is black, and the all-in-one HP computer, black and gray. I authorize these off officers to seize any <clears throat> article of property which they consider evidence. I understand and know what I am doing. No promises or threats have been made to me. No pressure or co- co- coercion of any kind has been used against me. Uh, appreciate that if you don't mind just signing, you can sign underneath. It's okay. Thank you, sir. So you said that you were, uh, and I'm, uh, I was writing this down. Uh, wait a minute. When you were, when we were talking, you went from Vegas to LA. No, I never really stayed in LA. I just would go there a lot. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What were you doing out there, you said? Mm, I would get mm, yeah. our product and stuff there. So Okay. I'd go there like almost once a week, almost. Was it your company or did you work for? Me and uh, my friend that moved out here. Together we I started it. Love that. Yeah. <laughs> You need a license to start a company up, or um, how did that work? Technically, it's under the law of um, that you don't have to get a license. Under the law, this is if you're 18, it's gifting to someone. Hmm. So you're not technically buying it from us or anything. I'm not selling it to you. You buy a monthly subscription and get that every month. As like a gift, so. Really? So that way you don't need a license or anything. If you had someone pay monthly, you give it to them and because because of their paying for the monthly subscription. They're paying. For the service? They're not paying for the marijuana at all. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Services. Right. Interest that was in LA or that was in that was in Las Vegas. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so after Vegas, then you said it just got too expensive out there. So where yeah, where'd you go from there? I went to my mom's outside of Young America. Okay. Yeah. Okay, then how long did you stay in Vegas then? Um, I mean from June to I think it was like been about about a year or so. Then next June, well, the next, like, August or September. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm reading your part. Keep I going. know. You can climb. Go ahead. Rockaway is going to get you for that. It was a misbelching opportunity. <laughs> Rockaway sees the catch up disappearing. <laughs> Um, I mean, from that June to, I think it was like been about, about a year or so the next June. Well, the next like August or September, she got married in September. So yeah, it's September. Okay. So August, September. Yeah. Yeah. I came back really to marry them. And then I thought about it and I was like, well, do what? Do what? Oh, I'm sorry. 
I'll just stay here. Imagine. You ordained minister. No kidding. Yeah, yeah. So you married your own mom? Yeah, right. No kidding. Yeah. And that's wow, that's crazy. And you just stayed with them then. Yeah, yeah. How did you do that? Like what is well, um what do you have to do to do that? My uh stepdad works at a hog farm, so <laughs> I work with him. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be shitting me. <laughs> oh Sorry, cat's breaking down. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Oh, I was right. like, hey, if you work, you, you know, you can stay here. And I, I mean, I paid rent and stuff and it was a pretty cool job. <laughs> okay. That's not too bad. Have you done anything, any other weddings since then or? Yeah, I have. I've done two or three in Nevada and then I did hers. Oh, so it's like nationwide. But since then I haven't done it. Yeah. No, no, nation. But, yeah, I can do it in all 50 states. Well, not Alaska. 49, but... Really? When am I going to Alaska? Why that? I don't know. It's... I don't know why. It says right on my paperwork, though, that you can't do it in Alaska. Huh. I'm not sure what the deal is there. Like, maybe they have their own... Right, yeah. Customs or... Right, Laws, I guess. Um, so then you stayed with mom and living in Young America. Young America? Right outside Young America. Um, and then working for stepdad, what's his name? Redacted, redacted. Yeah. What about his last name? Redacted. And, and then, then I, after your mom's, where'd you go from there? Um, well, really I just started living, you know, sleeping with friends and stuff, and then staying at whenever I could. For the past two years now, maybe. Well, no, no. I stayed with them until last August. So I stayed with them for probably about a year. Okay. And then, yeah. Well, no, it was probably longer than August. Sometime right before winter. Okay, 2019? Yeah, 2019, yeah. And then you kind of been staying with... Yeah, it was her and her friends. Yeah. And stuff in Kokomo. What other friends did you stay with? Um, I have a friend named Blank here that I hang out with every now and then. Okay. And he lets me stay there a lot. All right. There's a whole shitload of redacted stuff again. And then it's DC. Oops. So yep. you, hold on. Yeah. So you stayed with them. Where did they live at? I'm in Kokomo on a, what, I don't even know what street that is. Maybe. I don't even know. I'm terrible with street names. That and people's names. I'm terrible with that, too. Are you still working at a... Currently, I'm not, no. Okay. I've been trying, but I do graphic design and stuff. Okay. So, like, I'll just get jobs whenever I can. Okay. Yeah, I do a website called Fiber. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Yeah, I think I've heard of that. So, like, what... What was uh? What computer do you use for graphic design? My phone. You do you do graphic design from a phone? Yeah, from a web, from an app on the phone. It's called Canva. You can pretty much to do like literally anything you can think of that you can do on the computer. By the way, side note: I use that app. It's nothing like graphic design, but okay. Um, <laughs> sorry. Okay, so DC says really. It's really nice. Yeah. Huh. It's like, uh, or, or it's what you like, typical project, would you say? Um, like menus for restaurants. I do that a lot. I had to have picked up, I'm assuming, Yeah. with all that COVID stuff. Like in, yeah, definitely. But it actually slowed down a lot, too. Really? Yeah, because, you know, a lot of places would shut down because, like, what I'd want to do is, like, mom and pop businesses. Uh-huh. You know, somewhere just to try to get 200 250 from them, you know. Uh-huh. For uh, a lot of people charge thousands of dollars, you know, $1,000 for a website. I can do that same website for 200 bucks, you know. Plus, you can even make their website? 
Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yes. So not even just menus or anything? Everything, yeah. Okay. All from an app? Yeah. Well, the websites are done. I don't know if you know. Have you ever heard of GoDaddy.com? Uh-huh, yeah. The Danica Patrick thing, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, through that. Do everything. Well. That's how we found out about that. Um, is there was, uh, um, I just want to make sure, um, small black thumb drive, uh, in the Dell computer. That's for the Wi-Fi. Is that, is that for the Wi-Fi? Wi-Fi, yeah. But it's. Uh, it will say right on their Wi-Fi or whatever in the back of it. The, the thumb drive. Yeah. And the computer. Yeah. Is that, is that yours then too? The thumb drive, it looks like a thumb. It just goes in the USB. Okay, but yeah, that's yours. Yeah, oh yeah, that's for the Wi-Fi for the computers. So, okay, okay. So you don't go. So you don't got to run a cord all the way through the house. Okay, I'm going to add that real quick. Yeah, it does look a little like a USB drive. Uh, so that's like how you add. Yeah, it's Wi-Fi after. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, got it, got it. Yeah, those are a lifesaver since... They really are. Cat 5. They really are. Well, now we got Cat 6 now. Yep. Crazy. Um, But yeah, we can add that real quick. Um, So like you said, after Mom's there from August, August October 2019, um, redacted, you've been staying with her, the girlfriend. How long have you guys been together? I mean, you said together or you're together or you're not yeah definitely yeah oh. for us since like last may okay yeah so when, when did you guys meet um well uh i knew her brother in high school and then we met on facebook pretty much just talking on facebook and then we hung out and yeah um but i've known her family pretty much my whole life what's her brother's name same oh. Same last name, redacted. So you guys met in May of 2018. Yeah, somewhere. Or two years, you said, or... Yeah, on May 19th. Okay, May 2019. So, yeah. Okay, so I'm just trying to make sure, because you're kind of... Right. ...bounced around, and just a tad here, but August to October, and then you started staying with redacted... Uh, any other friends or anything like that? Uh, not really. I mean, not for like long periods or nothing like that, no. It's like a Dell, a black Dell desktop. Yeah, is that what it is, a Dell? I see, I don't even know. HP, Dell. Do you any like other USB drives or anything like that? No. No, uh, okay, just in case. If that is like a drive or something, right? If they can just take it, I just yeah put with uh any USB right drives, right? Um, so I just added a black Dell desktop with any USB drive, right? He's definitely not buying it to Wi Fi. <laughs> um, <laughs> just to that list, are, are you good with that? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay, still still signed and everything yeah you're a car guy you not really oh i'm sorry go ahead not not really so i kind of grew up kind of you grew up having to be yeah pretty much why is that i don't know he has this fascination with work cars so he'll buy a work car and then he'll like customize it two years later he'll just get rid of it like the car we have now, it's getting worked on. It was one of his work cars. He just gave it to us. What do you mean? Like car, a uh, work car, like a, cause he works at Chrysler. So he'll just, you know, go back and forth, just buy one car for work to drive to work. Oh, and stuff. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cause he don't want to put miles on his other cars. So, so what car are you driving now? Um, it's an old Grand Am, 98 Grand Am. Little Grand Am. Yeah. Did you grow up working on cars and stuff like that, too? <clears throat> no. Did you grow up working on cars? No, <clears throat> not really. 
Wait a minute. Um, your dad does, I think. Is that right? Sorry about that. Yeah, kind of, yeah. Oops. Okay. I'm, I'm taking DC spot. Sorry. 14. Motorcycles. Mechanic guy? Yeah, yeah. Um, then you said you, right now you're just looking for work and you're not doing any other work. Nah. Or nope. anything like that. What does your girlfriend do? Line number one. Uh, she works at. Okay. Yeah. They're in. In Kokomo. Yeah. Good. Full time or is she. Yeah. Full time. Um, so something that you had mentioned um, about when we were talking about the CP, you said it kind of was a wake up call when you were talking to those girls. <sighs> How old were they? I don't. The youngest I ever knew was 16. OK. Yeah. Um, so, again, and this is going to be important that, you know, and and I I put it on the table and I've told you. Right. Or, of course, I, I've watched your interviews. Right. Hmm. You know before, and I've gone through all the phones. So, you know from here on, it's, impo it's imperative. It's very important that you're 100% truthful. Right, yeah. Because you've read the charges and you understand this. Right. It's significant. Right. Okay, um, and I'm going to tell you that going through the phones, it's not the case, okay? And and I have it here, and we'll go through it. And for instance, um, you know you had uh, you had mentioned the exploitation thing, right? And I mean that's right here in the chat. Um, this kick messenger chat, which was on your your Apple iPhone. Do you remember what your kick messenger was? I don't even know. I don't even know. I'm not sure. I think it was my name. I think then maybe a number or something. Wasn't anything else? No. I think maybe Caden Klein won May. I don't know. My name, I think, and something. So your kick messenger accounts were all in your name? Yeah. You're 100% sure about that? Yeah. Okay. So did I mean, did anyone else have access to that phone or... No, I don't think so, no. I mean, I okay. didn't have a girlfriend or no one ever well, uses my phone or nothing like that. And again, I know you had you had talked about making fraudulent accounts. Right. And what, what fraudulent accounts have you made? Uh, like on Instagram. I would make stuff like that to try to, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah. And on Kick. I don't think I, well, I mean, like, I wouldn't send pictures of myself. Uh-huh. Hmm. But we're talking about the names and that. I don't, I don't think so. I think it was always my name and then, like, maybe a number, something like that. Okay, and like I said, I mean, want you to know I have these chats sitting right in front of me, so. Right. Where did the name Emily Allen, 15, come from? Emily Ann. Oh, I'm sorry. Emily Ann, 15, come from? Yeah, that's an important name later. Yeah, you're right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was just some random name that I made up. Yeah. Okay. So did you make that one? Yeah. Yeah, right. Okay. So tell me about that. And again, I know you remember these things, okay? I... I really... I... I because, you know, I've gone through all of this, and I want you to be clear on that. Right. I mean, I've gone through every device. Right. Every chat. So I need you to be honest. Right. Okay, because, I mean, the line is, it, it doesn't... Yeah. It doesn't do us any good. I'm not lying. But I know you know the Emily Ann name. I really... Okay. <laughs> didn't i mean it's been how long this this is pretty years big big right persona that you built for emily ann i mean it is what do you mean 
as in, you know, talking to other girls and you and talking to other people. I mean, Emily Ann obviously has a story behind her, right? Does that make sense? No, I don't know what you mean by that. No. What do you mean? A well, story? okay. Well, we'll go through. We'll go through this first since it's right here. Um, So this is in chat. It was May 15th, 2016 uh, to May 17th, 2016. And this is between Emily Ann, 45, and um, messages, hey, sup, um, Emily Ann. So what kind of pics? Whatever you want, Emily Ann, LOL, age 13 to 16, Emily Ann, oh, redacted. What do, redacted, what do you have? Um, send an image here, which the first image is a Caucasian female exposing her, her breast. Um, it had a uh, water across the chest and a uh, caption said like this. Oh, the caption said, quote, like this and quote. Um, so we go down a little bit further into the chat and redacted says, LOL. I mean, what ages? Emily and 45. A lot. A, a lot. What about you? Um, quote, three to 16? What's your youngest? Jesus Christ. Emily Ann says, I don't know, LOL. Emily Ann says, you send first. Your first, your youngest, end quote. Uh, they send uh, a picture of a 13-year-old, Emily Ann. Damn, she's hot, Emily Ann. Any videos? Yeah, LOL. Your turn, um, redacted. Sends a video. Sends a video, uh, or... It was an image of um, depicted a Caucasian female, um, 13 years old, taking a picture in the mirror. She was completely nude, turned away from the mirror, exposing her butt and posing. And Emily Ann's response was, damn, that's hot as F. Yeah, I don't remember any of that. And that's me being 1000% honest with you. I mean, like I told them the last time, I did talk to a lot of girls. So, I mean, I don't... That was four years ago. I don't remember any of that. But I mean, this is not this is not like talking to another girl. This is an exchange of CP. Right. Yeah. No, I don't remember. Likely a male. It's most likely. Mm, right. Two males. Right. Two females name on kick. Right. Exchanging graphic CP girls that are like five oh, years okay. old. What years old? What? Yeah, very, very young. Like very young. So how? Yeah, that's not me. How could you not remember that, man? Yeah, exactly. That is not me. I would never. That is, I, I swear to God, that was not me. Then you need to come up with who else had access to that device. F. I don't. That was four years ago. I don't think anyone. But F. I don't. I never, like, maybe 15, 14, maybe. We're but talking. Again, no kids. We're talking. No. Darn it. So shocking. No, definitely. There's a definitely ton not. of it. Right. And that's resulted in this charging document. Right. There's a ton of it. So who else could have potentially used these accounts and your phone? Okay, wait. Hold it. So stop right there. So mm -hmm. listen, it's the, I, so I want to, I, I, I like this definitely reading the transcript thing. Would you guys be willing to do this like on a live stream in like a couple of days or something? Cause this is going to start to really get into the part where they're questioning Keegan Klein as to who else had access to his devices. And it starts to get really interesting. And I think it has a lot that ties into the possibility of Richard Allen and or other people who are involved in the CP ring. But but right isn't that the point? Isn't that what you were trying to do? I don't mind waiting, but isn't that what you were trying to do? But then the whole rest of it does that, honey. We've got 150 pages yeah. to go. Oh, I, hear, okay. I hear what you're saying. So <laughs> if, if, I, you know, I agree. It's better to do this in parts because I'm not mentally prepared for what it, we're about to go through. So I would exactly. rather be I would rather be prepared for that. Exactly. I mean, it's things start to get really heavy and stuff. Yeah. I need to put like a, a disclaimer and stuff up for all that stuff, too. No, I, I agree, you know. Kelly. I was I was already thinking that myself. So yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. So. So is that OK? Yeah. So if that's OK with you guys, we'll do that. No, I'm listen. fine with it. Whatever. I'm good to go. Cool. But I want to listen yeah. to um, before because it's, it's getting towards 12 here. But 
I want to, I do want to listen to that. Um, the richer, I'm sorry, the, uh, Doug Carter interview. It's only two minutes again and just pause at a couple points and just like break it down a little bit. So if you guys will stay up, that would be great. Okay. I got you. Right. Okay. So yeah, sorry for that. I didn't mean to like stop so abruptly, but I was like, Oh my gosh, it's no, like, it's so okay. it's getting, we got 150 pages of script to go. <laughs> and yeah. then all yeah, the rest of the Okay. Yeah. And I'm not, re I'm not ready to read all that if I haven't, I haven't prepared myself for it. <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's, it's intense. So, okay. All right. Here we go. The guy in custody, Richard Allen, is he the only person being looked at in this investigation? Uh, uh, right now, he's the one, the, he's the one that's been said that, that has, that's now facing murder charges. So again, we are not going to stop looking at other people until this is completely done and we have nothing left to do. Okay, so he's really tripping over himself here. Doug Carter is usually pretty well spoken. He's pretty like smooth, you know, he speaks in a smooth manner. He's really tripping over himself and he says, Well, yeah, yeah, he he's the one on murder charges, and we're not gonna stop until you know we have everyone else. I mean, to me, the fact that he specifies, well, he's the one with the murder charges. To me, like the way I'm reading into this, when you take this whole interview in context, he's saying, Yeah, he's the one who committed the murder, but there are other people involved. We're not gonna stop until we get them. They played other roles in this crime. What do you guys think? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what it sounds like. Here we go. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'll keep playing here. One of the things that I've heard is why not release the cause of death? Not because people are morbidly curious, but if they knew they were looking for somebody that was either a, a stab or a gunshot maybe they know somebody that sold the gun sold the knife maybe they could find the weapon somewhere what's the rationale for not releasing the official cause of death because of the individual or individuals that did it uh, only they, they know what they did and i'm trying to think of the, the right way to say this has that slowed down the investigation because i think the public with all of their tips has been a big help in this wouldn't it make sense to have the public looking for the possible weapon I don't think at this point it would. I, again, I, uh, functionally, I understand the question, Hammer. I really do understand it. And we're going to look back on this and, and probably realize, dang, I wish we'd have done A, B, and C rather than B and E. We can't talk about what we think. I've said this many times yeah. before. We, you should expect us, expect us to only talk about what we know. And that even changes more so uh, once there's a probable cause affidavit signed by a judge for the arrest of an individual. Not just Richard Allen, but in any criminal case, especially a complex criminal case. This case is unlike... So this is the first time he mentions a complex criminal case. Any that I've seen in an almost a 40-year career. So there are so many different tentacles to this. It's very, it's a very, it's very complex. So I already kind of reacted to that. What do you think about that, Ara? I just honestly, I, I really have a lot of respect for this this man in uniform in front of I us right too. now. Um, he too. seems very genuine and just yeah. just this honest person. And we've seen a lot of people in his same position yeah. in different towns that give off a different demeanor. And him, I something in my gut, just I want to genuinely believe what he's saying. And I think that's right. I think that he is genuinely surprised as to the more digging that, that his department is doing, the more surprised of who's involved in this crime. Yeah. And he's yeah, a little no. taken back by it. He doesn't know how to react to it. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think, again, you know, here is one of the areas where I think he's speaking pretty smoothly. And I think that his choice of, you know, how complex it is and using that analogy of the tentacles, the many tentacles of this case, I think is really striking. Yeah. So. The other wow. name that's involved in this whole story is Kagan Klein. Now, he has not been charged with anything in regards to the murders of these beautiful young ladies in Delphi. We know that he had some sort of uh, communication with one of the ladies the day before they passed away. Has he been speaking to police? Has he been given some sort of plea deal to help police? We'll continue to work on Kagan Klein. How about that? We'll continue to work on Keegan Klein. Work on him says a lot. Yeah, I sure does. They need him for something bigger, and it's scary. I wonder if it, it involves people in higher positions in office. I mean, this could, this could get really ugly. I think so, too. I definitely think so. I think there, I absolutely think there's a ring. I think that everything that I said in the video that I showed earlier in this live stream, or if you just come in, that 
is the last upload that I put up, making the connections between Keegan Klein and Richard Allen after all of the research I've done on this and a lot the yarn mittens has helped me with here. I absolutely positively believe that there's a CP ring and, you know, I believe that, you know, they, I, I do think that they have their murder. I think that was obviously their first and foremost goal, but I think there are a lot of other people that have major culpability and criminal charges coming their way involved in this case and far beyond. Everybody needs to hope and pray that they're able to keep him alive long enough for him to do what they need him to do. That's one of the fears that I have. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a really good point. Um, the Rockaways here says, we have to be honest, though, and admit that the officers under his command have all dropped the ball for getting to prosecute Keegan for two years and somehow clearing Allen on day one. Yeah, I know. I know. On February 17th, we have to remember that reportedly, you know, Richard Allen went to a conservation officer and put himself on the bridge at the time that the girls were on the bridge, but just said that he didn't see them. Apparently, this file has been lost for almost six years, and it was, uh, you know, they said, oh, you know, we just decided to go back into our old files. But what I certainly, uh, what I firmly believe happened was Keegan Klein started to talk. As I mentioned, he met the federal officers at that Air Force base. He sent them to the river. Whether that was truthful or not, saying that there was a weapon and a cell phone in the river, I think that was maybe him kind of playing around with them, feeling out, feeling them out. But it was the beginning of him starting to spill. Um, I just absolutely believe that's what happened. That it, it definitely sounds like that, especially yeah. from the uh, in from the national CP ring that we just learned of. It's not far off anymore. These situations. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. Um, let's see. The Rockways here also says thank you. So you contributed so much, Rockways. I appreciate it. it says we also um, hear that they lost. A fingerprint collected at the crime scene. Holy shit. And the marathon gas, gas, lost video, hard drive disaster. Yeah, I know. There's, you know, with just so many cases, there's so many fumbling of so much fumbling of the evidence, losing at critical things, and it's just really very disgusting. So, all right. Well, on that note, I'm getting super tired. So I'm gonna wrap up this live stream. But thank you guys. Thank you so much, Jarnam. And thank you, Ara. Thank you for reading that, for being up here. The whole time, Yarmis, I really appreciate that. Ari, you're always such a good sport. Thank you. So thank you, moderators. Thank you, everyone, chat, subscribers, and members. And we will definitely be doing another Delphi live stream really soon. I personally am super on top of this case right now. I want to know exactly what is going on and help to ensure that complete justice is served for Abby and Libby. All right, sweetie, good night. Good night, darling. Get a lot of rest and everyone else get some good rest tonight. It'd be warm if you're in um, the north, northern, eastern part of the United States like I am right now. It is snowing like crazy outside. It's very cold. And everyone, as always, please be safe and I'll see you soon. I appreciate all of you guys. Thank you so much.